That's what we have to learn how to do. Welcome all of the hindrances with joy. Why? Because when you have joy in your mind, your awareness is very fast. And you're not clinging to it. But that's hard to do. Unless, uh uh-oh, I'm going to be that kind of monk again. You laugh at how crazy your mind is. It's not yours anyway. It just came up because conditions are right for it to come up. The more you laugh at the seriousness of your mind, the easier it is to see that it's not my problem, it's not my pain. It's only this. It's only aversion. It's only attachment of whatever kind of emotional state arises. It's only that. That's not mine. I certainly didn't ask it to come up. I didn't all of a sudden say, well, you know, I've been calm for a few days. It's time to get restless. It arises because the conditions are right for it to arise. What you do with what arises in the present moment dictates what happens in the future. This is where your point of decision is. You want to fight with it? Fine, you can fight with it. You can try to push it away. You can try to control it. And you can also look forward to having that come up over and over again. Or, you can allow that to be. Without getting into the story, let go of the thoughts and relax. See that feeling, that tight mental fist, the one that really doesn't like that disturbance. And let it go. Let it be there. It's okay for it to be there. It has to be okay. Because that's the truth. It's there. So, allow it to be there. Okay, friend, you want to be here and cause me all kinds of pain? That's no problem. You can do that. You allow it to be. You relax the tension and tightness in your body. Now, that tension and tightness might not go away right away. You don't stay there and keep relaxing, 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 relaxing. No. You relax one time. If the tension doesn't go away, fine. The tension in your head doesn't go away, fine. Gently bring your mind back to your object of meditation. Stay with your object of meditation, but you know it's not going to be for long because that attachment's big. And you're going to bounce back. Okay? What happened? I was here on my object of meditation. Now I'm over here with this pain. How'd that happen? So, you see the whole number happening just like it was on a tape deck. The story starts up. The worry, the fear, the anxiety, the dislike. Let the go of the story. Relax. Tight mental fist is there. Don't like that feeling. No, it's okay. It's only this unpleasant feeling. Relax. Come back to your object of meditation. Again, you might not let go of all of the tension at one time, but that's okay. When you're practicing loving kindness, you come back to the feeling in your heart, that radiating feeling, 
you bring up a feeling of peace and calm and open acceptance. You know what it feels like to have an accepting mind? Accept. And radiate that feeling to yourself, to your friend, whoever you want to. Now your mind goes away again. But this time you see a little bit, oh, there was some stuff happening, but I didn't really recognize it very well. Okay. Now the story starts up again. Let it be and relax. Let that feeling be and relax. Come back to your object of meditation. Now, as you do that over and over, you'll start to notice that you stay on your object of meditation a little bit longer. And you're starting to notice the process a little bit more clearly. Now, when you do this with a sense of humor, it will happen faster. I promise. <laughs> so, every time you let go and relax and come back to your object of meditation, that unpleasant feeling and the story about it is helping you to sharpen your awareness of how the process works. And you start catching it a little bit faster, relaxing a little bit more easily, coming back to your object of meditation, staying on your object of meditation a little bit longer. It doesn't matter whether it's an emotional pain or a physical pain. You treat it in the same way. What are you, uh, unpleasant feeling? Pleasant feeling. I don't care. It's a feeling. Anything. Whatever pulls your mind away from your object of meditation, you treat it in the same way. Now, what are you doing when you see this? You get more and more clear that there is a mind and body. You get more and more clear that there are six sense doors. You get more and more clear that there's a feeling that arises. And right after that feeling, there's a tension and tightness. Right after that, there is the clinging. And you'll see that manifest in all kinds of different ways, in your mind and in your body. As you see that part of the process, you start recognizing it a little bit easier. So when you see your mind starting to move, you can relax as soon as the feeling comes up and then there's no craving and there's no clinging and there's no habitual tendency with it. Now you're seeing clearly how the process works. Yes. Well, there's of course it's a nata. Of course, the whole entire time. The whole entire time. Every time you let go of craving, you're letting go of that belief that this is you. And an amazing thing is that craving and that false belief that there is a self is not particularly strong. It is particularly persistent. But it's not that strong. It's easy to let go of that tension once you really recognize it. But it keeps coming back and back and back and back. So every time you relax and allow it to be, your mind takes that little step down and becomes calm. 
And with that, your mind becomes pure. And you bring that mind that's very alert back to your object of meditation. That's how your mindfulness improves. By that little brief moment of clarity that you bring back to your object of meditation. That's why you can progress reasonably fast by doing this practice as compared with doing other practices. 